Well, how do that jump? So I'm reviewing Rebel Moon Part 1 on Netflix. Now, it's a sci-fi jaunt across the skies and across the little mini solar system that is in Rebel Moon. So it starts off with an antagonist being on some sort of farming world, sort of just sort of hiding out their days from this galactic empire. And you can see them arriving inside that trailer there and this giant massive ship that breaches the clouds. And it's not too long before her sanctuary has been invaded by these hooligans, these roustabouts, these sort of Nazis from space. Think Star Wars Empire with more of a sort of like Nazi Germany sort of vibe going on. Yeah, it's freaking mentals. This does sort of scream out to me Star Wars and lots of other sci-fi type films from that sort of era and time that's been re-rendered into modern day. And you know what? It freaking worked. Yes, there are little bits of here, there and everywhere. I mean, every single planet felt different. And every time they jumped to a new planet, which was heavily signposted with lovely text on the screen, so you knew they were in different planets, so a lot of the other sort of reviews and takes that I've seen on this is this film's very bitty, but it 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 needs to have its own identity per planet. And I think they actually done that very well. And I think they actually signposted these characters that you start to actually fall in love with during this actual sort of show. And I did. Every single character inside of this, I really liked. And not to say, it, it made me think, this is why I pay my Netflix subscription. You know, I know we've had writer strikes and all sorts of other weirdness happening over the last couple of years, and perhaps Netflix hasn't been hitting its mark with some of their shows. The last time it did, and I was actually excited about it, was when the very first season of like Stranger Things aired. This is now something that I'm seriously looking forward to. I can't wait for episode two in April of next year. And this is why we pay our Netflix subscriptions. Stuff like this. It felt like it belonged in the cinema and it hasn't long aired over in cinema and then it's straight onto Netflix. Bloody brilliant, bloody brilliant stuff. Now, some of the characters in this, I really liked the Japanese sort of lady and her eye makeup freaking great when you get to see her but she's got these two dueling blades and they light up on fire almost like sort of like lightsabers she takes on this giant arachnid sort of lady that's got like lots of eyes it's a freaking excellent well choreographed fight scene and i loved it now i know that the person that actually put this together or um, produced it or whatever done 300 300 is one of my favorite sort of films when it comes to choreography and getting into the characters and liking the characters it's very rare these days that a show actually hits me and says i like these characters some shows i just couldn't care less about the characters in it you know game of thrones did that quite well this delivers these characters in a believable sense i mean take for instance ripley from alien you actually believe that Ripley in Alien could tear you a new one if she wanted to. I wouldn't mess with frickin' Ripley. This lady here, she actually puts in quite a lot of body mechanics into her combat scenes. And the way she spun that was very believable, like she's done it a million times. Now her backstory is, when she was nine, this galactic empire invaded her homeworld and took her sort of prisoner in a roundabout way but one of the mass generals at the top that butchered her family actually took a shine to her because she saw that she had the killer instinct and made her like his adopted daughter and that's why she's freaking kick ass she's badass because she's been training since she was nine until the age that she is in this and it comes across as believable yeah you don't see her take on a freaking goliath or a giant most of the people are sort of like grunts and stuff like that she takes them out like they were nothing and it's believable she actually comes across as a kick-ass sort of character. And she's pretty ruthless, you saw there. She just took somebody out. Boom, they're on the floor, right now. Bang, you're dead. You know, no messing, no hesitation, done. Freaking loved it. And some of the characters in it feel like they've just been shoehorned in, though. There is one, and he's like this barbarian Conan-y type lookalike that rides a giant griffin. But the griffin's freaking great how they've realised it into the world. Think Jason and the Argonauts with CGI and you're somewhere close to it. And I love the fact that you've got that from planet to planet. Some planets have got these mythological creatures on. It's like sci-fi and fantasy had a baby. Freaking loved it. And I, I really wish they would do a video game of this. If they make a Rebel Moon video game, freaking take my money. 
The Chums, I thought I'd do a little bit of research, and they are making a freaking video game. So sorry about the little mini interjection here, but let's just hit play on this and let's hear what he has to say. Please tell us a bit about what's in store. Yeah, yeah, we're also super excited to reveal that we're making a, a video game uh, for Rebel Moon, and the game we're developing with the Super Evil Megalcorp, and uh, it'll expand the Rebel Moon universe. It takes place like um, right after the events of the two movies. Um, and it really is a, I've been talk, with, talking with those guys and really interacting with them. The ideas they have and the, the way the game's gonna expand the universe is just unbelievable and I'm super excited about it. You'll be able to like pick your rebel and then go on missions and it's like uh, one and two players in a co-op. Yeah, and it's crazy, but we're, look, and we're just starting to talk about a bunch of other crazy ideas inside the game. So it's really fun and that's coming. So keep your eye out for more. Okay, so it seems to be very much at the ideas stage, so it could be quite well off into the future. But I'd like to think that it's going to drop, hopefully close-ish, to why there's some hype about the actual movie. But there we are. It is coming, people. Freaking awesome. Yeah, yes, I'd love to be in this universe where you don't know what's on planet to planet, especially when there's griffins sort of like willy-nilly just in the wilds. Heck yes, director of 300, Man of Steel. I love 300, I love Man of Steel. I haven't seen Army of the Dead. I might have to now. Yeah, because I... Freaking beautiful. I mean, look at the... Look at that. Look at the city and that. Freaking lovely. So they go to mining towns. They go to sort of like backwater areas. And basically, they're recruiting the best of the best that hate the Empire. So they've got like an ex-gladiator. They've got this, like I said, the one with the dueling sort of swords that lights up on fire. They've got a leader of like a rebellion there. you got this guy who's quite funny. He's quite Irish. I'm not going to tell you much about him because there's all sorts of weird twists and things that go happen on in there you've got to watch it you've got to watch it it's it's freaking great people yeah it's it's really really good really really captivating and the reasons it's captivating is because each and every single one of the characters have got something about them they've got a little spark a little bit of interest you'd be a bit gutted if one of them met their demise and yeah, and you don't know if somebody's going to meet their demise. And I, I, I don't want to spoil anything, but there, there are a couple of things in here like, oh my days, I didn't expect that to happen so soon. There's also a robot guy in this as well. Like, it, it's like carrying crates and stuff. And he's really cool. I like him. I like the voice actor for him as well. Every single character has got something about them. And the actual, the actual movie itself, and even the antagonists, the bad guys, the, the main bad guys. Oh, that's that Conan guy that I'm on about that rides a griffin. Pretty, pretty awesome. But the bad guys in it, you want them to get what's coming to them. You really freaking do. Oh, that's the spider lady. Yeah, so, yeah. I didn't watch the trailer. I just jumped straight in and watched this. This is the first time I'm seeing the trailer. And I've put it, like, at half speed because it's only three minutes long and I can talk the toppy off of a freaking apple. Yeah, it's... It, freaking mentals mate the actual the actual scenes the cgi the graphics the special effects are all on par there's nothing in this movie that i went well that looked a little bit iffy it all looked freaking great it looked movie quality this looks cinema quality you know and the actual musical score draw you in all the sound effects felt good the actual guns themselves when they were fired they had a little bit of recall even though they are some sort of laser or energy weapon it just felt great. It's got that sort of steampunky esque feel. If you've been playing Starfield and you're into NASA punk, a lot of the actual cockpits in this look like they were straight out of freaking Starfield. In fact, I watched this and I either wanted to play Dragon's Dogma to go and ride a freaking Griffin or, or Muller one, or I wanted to play Starfield again. Because even like when the, that sort of opening there and you've got all the steam going off and the landing gear coming out, it's very, very Starfield. It really is. So yeah, I need to see if they are going to make a video game of this. Because yeah, heck yes. Very, very cool. There are no heroes. That's a good way of saying it in a roundabout way. Because all of these are like ex-bad guys that have turned their heads and now sort of going up against the Empire. And they're like a band of ragamuffins that have gone back in to sort of like take their revenge against the giant sort of bad guys in this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, ruffians, ruffians, not ragamuffins. Ruffians is the right word. <laughs> yeah, but in an evil way, they're freaking great. Awesome. 
Really, really cool. Love this. Love this show to bits. And I honestly can't wait. There's the android that I was on about. It's pretty darn cool. And he looks a little bit like Corvax or something out of No Man's Sky. It's got splurges of all the sci-fi that I've loved over the last few years and smelted them together into a wondrous film. And there's a lot of bits like this, like the slow-mo type. And it actually does slow-mo inside of the actual the actual the movie if you want to call it a movie i mean it's i think it's i hope it's two parts i don't think it's three parts hopefully it's a two-parter but i would say this was on par with june and i'd say that my sort of anticipation for this one is is as high as june for part two I'm very excited for june part two and i'm really excited for this and some of the ideas inside of this movie were great it's like you just saw that guy sort of like in this bubble thing well that bubble thing is some sort of holographic communicator with the lord of the empire and they get sucked into it and there's all these cables that go into them like the matrix it's it's freaking great Really, 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 really great. It's a very immersive sort of film. You kind of come away from it thinking, God, I wish I was in something as epic as that. You know what I'm saying? It's one of those movies that gets you thinking, wow, if I was in that situation, what would I do? Yeah, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, it's got everything I like. It's got action, it's got sci-fi, it's got fantasy. It's got the action there. Did I already say action? Uh, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But Rebel Moon, Rebel Moon. If you've got Netflix, you have to hit this up. This is definitely worth your subscription. This is why you're paying your subscription. I mean, a lot of other streaming services right now are a little bit char um, questionable. Yeah, Rebel Moon, A Child of Fire. I didn't even know it was called Child of Fire until just this moment. Anyway, people, I would give this a freaking solid 9 out of 10. It's freaking excellent. Go watch it. You're going to love it. Anyway, it's Monday. Take care. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.